All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to evaluate a really cool calculus integral, the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx. And I will evaluate them two ways. One, the standard calculus way, kind of boring yet interesting. The other one, I'll present you the oh my god way. So here's the standard calculus way. So just integrate by parts. So u is e to the x. Uh, dv, it's cosine of x. It's either du or v, I, I forgot the, uh, uh, the order. And then du, it's e to the x. And then anti-differentiate, v is sine of x. And then you go through the zigzag motion. So this becomes e to the x sine of x minus integral of e to the x sine of x. And you're like, oh my god, why did you take this easy integral, turn it into an integral of the same type? Don't worry, you are calculus students. You're not scared. Or maybe you're, you're more than calculus students and you're very scared. But don't worry, I will give you hope. Because, let's do this again. So now u is e to the x, and du, or dv, it's sine of x. Then du is e to the x, and v is minus cosine of x. Well, if you want, you can also put this minus here, and it becomes cosine of x. But then you go through the zigzag motion, which is uh, like this, okay? <laughs> then what you get, you still that e to the x sine of x minus, I write it this way, it's very important, we have, so you go this way, so minus e to the x cosine of x, minus integral of e to the x minus cosine of x dx. So be really careful, there are here three minuses at play, but then what you get is, integral e to the x cosine of x dx becomes e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine of x minus integral of e to the x cosine of x dx. And you're like, oh my god, this is a problem because we started with an integral, we turned up with the same integral. But here's a cool, cool thing. So cool. Um, namely, we can now solve for unknown. You treat the integral as an unknown and you solve for it. So this equals to junk minus this. So if you solve for it, you get the following. You get two integral e to the x cosine of x dx equals e to the x, if you want, sine of x plus cosine of x. And just dividing by 2, you get integral of e to the x cosine of x equals 1 half of that. So e to the x, if you want, sine of x plus cosine of x over 2. Wow! How neat is that? So, you might be impressed, but let me show you now the cool way, the oh my god way. Because, let's start again, we have integral of e to the x cosine of x. But instead of doing that, we'll solve something harder, or easier or harder, depending on you, how you feel. Um, Instead of doing cosine of x, let's do e to the ix. So let's make this complex. I'd like to remind you, e to the ix becomes cosine of x plus i sine of x. Because what's beautiful is, this becomes e to the x plus ix, the x, and that's integral of e to the 1 plus i, x, the x, 
Oh no, I think I forgot about the constants. I'm so sorry if you're watching. No. Um, anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> But I'm gonna get lots of comments on this. But anyway, so then what you do, you evaluate this e to the 1 plus i x over 1 plus i plus a constant. Now we have it. And what we get then is, I know it looks really weird, but we don't like i's on the denominator. So what we do, we multiply this by the conjugate. So e to the 1 plus i x over 1 plus i and multiply this by 1 minus i. And the nice thing is we get something neat because we have e to the 1 plus i x and then times 1 minus i. And this becomes like a squared minus b squared but here i squared is minus 1, so you get 1 minus minus 1, so you get 2. And then you just got to evaluate this. So this becomes e to the x, e to the i x times 1 minus i over 2. And remember what is e to the i x? It's a cosine of x plus i sine of x times 1 minus i. And again, all this divided by 2. And then you just fall out. So e to the x cosine of x. Then so i times i, which is minus 1. So plus 1 uh, cosine of x, if you want, plus sine of x divided by 2, which you may have seen before. And I forgot the constant again. I'm so sorry. I mean, I'm doing this in December, uh, like at 7, almost 8 p.m., so please forgive me. And then plus i, I get e to the x over 2, and the cross terms. So uh, let's say minus cosine of x plus sine of x. Now, why is this important? So, we evaluated that integral using complex number, numbers. We wrote this in terms of real parts and imaginary parts. But now, also write this integral into real parts and imaginary parts. So, integral of e to the x, e to the x, sorry, cosine of x plus i sine of x. x, and that's integral of e to the x cosine of x plus i integral e to the x sine of x dx dx. And now compare. The real part of this has to be the real part of this. The imaginary part of this has to be the imaginary part of this. So just comparing, we actually get two integrals at once. Integral e to the x cosine of x dx equals uh, 1 half e to the x cosine of x plus sine of x. Plus some constant if you want. And in fact, integral of e to the x sine of x dx becomes 1 half e to the x if you want sine of x minus cosine of x. Plus a constant. Wow, two at one. Can you imagine? Yeah, that's how cool math is. So make sure to take lots of math. You'll learn more cool stuff like that. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.